What's going on fam? I'm here for you today with a strength circuit. I have four drills to help you prepare for handstand and other arm balances and inversions. This is a circuit where we don't have to use our hands, right? We don't have to bear weight on our hands and wrists, but we will strengthen the rest of the body to prepare for handstand. So I'm gonna show you just all of these drills once on both sides, but this is something that you could do three sets of each movement, make a little circuit for yourself, or implement into your regular practice if you're working on handstand or other kind of challenging yoga or just movement shapes in general. Start off, if you have a mat, by folding it up a couple times. Make sure you have a blanket, all right? You're gonna need a blanket or a towel or something that you can slide. So if you don't have one, go grab one. And while you're at it, maybe grab a couple yoga blocks or a couple books or some, some rectangular objects, some Tupperwares, anything like that will work. All right, so your back foot can be for this drill, or excuse me, the back knee comes down onto the mat or just onto the floor. If you're, you could do all of these just on hardwood even if you wanted to. Place your front heel on the blanket. From here, we're basically doing active half splits. So go ahead and straighten the front leg and then drive the front heel into the blanket and slide it forward. We're not using the hands because we want the legs to control. This is our active hamstring drill. Slide it back, press down into the blanket, slide it back, and then push it forward, open up through space. Try to keep your quad engaged, try to keep the kneecap lifted a little bit, and then slide the blanket back and then push it forward. Find the engagement, find the, the hustle, the challenge, one more round and slide it back. And I know some of y'all are probably following along with me. Some of y'all might be just watching to observe or to take note. That's both. Okay. Yeah, I'm just switching sides. The most important thing is to have control and authority over the legs and to find engagement. So you could make this relatively easy. You could be pretty lazy about it or you could make it active by driving down and finding your outer, outer ranges of motion and trying to control yourself at those ranges of motion. So that's our first one. The hamstrings are fired up and engaged. So cool, that's one out of four. The next one is for hip extension. So stretching out the front of the hips, but not just doing it with passive stretching, doing it with activity and building strength through our hips. So front foot is just on your folded up mat or on the ground. Front foot's not moving, so it's not important. The back foot is on the blanket, right? Back foot is on the blanket. And then go ahead and Keep both legs straight to start. Slide the back leg behind you. Again, actively pressing your back foot into the mat. Eventually, you can't move further when both legs are straightened because you kind of hit a wall. It's like you're in an active splits position standing. And then go ahead and bend your front knee and take it into as long of a lunge as you humanly can without dropping the back knee to the mat. And then pull up to stand. Use the strength in both your front leg, but mostly the strength in your back leg to make that happen. So drive back, keep both legs straight, eventually hit a wall, so bend the front knee, and then slide it up mostly using the back leg. And then push back, and then slide up. I'm gonna go ahead and switch legs. But you can do this, I, I don't recommend a specific number of them that you need to do. I would say do enough until you become tired or until you start to lose form, and then pause, take a break, move to the next drill, or take another set if that's what you're doing. Right. I'm a big believer in that there's no one correct way to do everything. It all depends on our bodies and how we're feeling that day. So legs stay straight, active splits, and then once we hit our wall, bend into the front knee, and then slide it back. All right, so we got our hamstrings, our first drill. We got hip extension for our second drill. Let's do hip flexion for our third drill. So hip extension, just when we find space, lengthen the front of the hips. Hip flexion is when we close off that angle and strengthen the hip flexors rather than stretch them as we do in hip extension. So for this, for the first thing, you'll need a couple blocks, but you could also do this on like a low chair. You could do this, um, you could stack a couple blankets, one on top of the other, stack a couple pillows, right? Anything that you could sit down onto that's like, you know, six inches to a foot off of the ground here. So stand like a little more than a foot in front of your blocks or in front of your objects. From this standing position, arms reach forward, hips send back. Hips send back, back, back. Keep sending the hips back. Try to keep knees somewhere over the ankles and try to see how peacefully you can drop the butt down onto your seat. From here, lean forward. Listen carefully, just peel the butt up off the blocks, lean forward, and then sit back down. And then lean forward, lift the butt, and sit back down. So you can kind of see that we're working in this space of deep hip flexion. We're trying to find control in this space of 
hip flexion here. And this is beautiful work if you're trying to work into crow pose or prepare for crow pose. If you're trying to do handstand from the tuck entry, really so many arm balances in yoga require very deep hip flexion. So that's the space that we're working here. All right, when you're done with that, go ahead and release. And part two of that movement for hip flexion is just forward fold to malasana squat. Go ahead and find your yogi squat, malasana squat. Find length in the spine here. If you struggle with this, you can pop a block under your butt. No worries, find something that's comfortable. And then from here, we're coming into forward fold directly. So try to keep your belly glued to your thighs for as long as you can. Eventually, legs extend, forward fold. Bend the knees, sink the hips all the way down in space. Lift the heart, long spine. Forward fold, send the weight down, straighten the legs. Sink the hips, lift the heart, look forward. Straighten the legs, look down, bend the knees, sink down, lift the heart. All right, so that's our third uh, kind of set of movements. That was like a little two for one. And the next one is a little two for one as well. All right, so this is my one of my single favorite movements that I like to do to prepare for handstand. Again, the nicest thing is that we don't have to put any weight on our hands, but we still get to replicate the full handstand position. So go ahead and lay down, get your two objects, whether they're Tupperwares, books, blocks, it doesn't matter to me. Anything that you can grip between the hands and the feet. Take one prop between the feet, one between the hands, and then open to low boat pose, Navasana. Reach the arms overhead, reach the feet long, and then float the feet as well as float the hands. Float the shoulder blades if you can, and breathe. Press your mid to lower back into the mat, and you can see my voice is getting shaky because I am putting in so much effort. Squeeze the block, squeeze the feet. Breathe for three, two, one, relax. Again, that's something I recommend doing for as long as you have the capacity to do and then rest and then maybe try again afterwards. So round two of this movement is coming onto our belly, otherwise it's the same. So one block goes between the feet at the back behind us. One block goes between the hands. This might take an extra moment to set yourself up. Once you feel ready, open into locust pose. Squeeze the block overhead, squeeze the feet. Very similar to the other one we just did, except this time we're strengthening the back body rather than the front body because we're in this kind of boat, or excuse me, locust position. So we're pressing our belly down instead of our back. And we're breathing for three, two, one, release. Ooh. All right, so those are your kind of four sets of movements. And the last two movements kind of had a, a dual component to them, but that's okay, a little extra bang for your buck. I recommend creating a circuit for yourself, right? Do all of these three or four times each. Run through it, it won't take you that long but it will build a lot of strength, especially if these are movements that you practice over the long run. They'll make things like handstand, crow pose, and other arm balances and inversions feel much more available in your body. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned at least one thing. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Feel free to subscribe. Either way, I love you, and I hope you have a peaceful rest of your day and week ahead. Much love, my people. Peace.